<laughs> the past uh, certainly does hurt, doesn't it? Amen. And you can either learn from the past or you can run from the past, but the past certainly hurts. As a matter of fact, there's probably not a person watching online or in this building that doesn't understand about the past, you know, that, that, that spring break weekend, right? That, that decision I made that I know that I, I regret horribly that I, I made that decision. Every single person's life is filled with mistakes, failures, and errors. And we've all failed at times, and many times we actually feel like a failure, right? You made a decision and you feel like a failure. So many people are living in the past because of what you did, whether it was yesterday, last month, or 20 years ago. For some of us, you did something in the past and because of that, you, you're living in a life of regret. I came across an incredible poem called The City of Regret. Listen to it carefully. I had not really planned to take a trip this year, yet I found myself packing anyway. And off I went dreading it, I was on another guilt trip. I booked my reservation on Wish I Had Airlines. I didn't check my bags. Everyone carries their baggage on this airline. And I had to drag it for what seemed like miles to the Regret City Airport. And I could see that people from all over the world were there with me, limping along under the weight of bags that they had packed themselves. I caught a cab to Last Resort Hotel, the driver taking the whole trip backward, looking over his shoulder. And there I found the ballroom where my event would be held, the annual pity party. As I checked in, I saw that all my old colleagues were there on the guest list. The Dunn family were there. Woulda, coulda, and shoulda. Both of the opportunities were there, missed and lost. All the yesterdays were there as well. There were too many to count, but all would have sad stories to share. Shattered dreams and broken promises would be there too. Along with their friends, don't blame me, and I couldn't help it. And of course, hours and hours of entertainment would be provided by that renowned storyteller, it's their fault. As I prepared to settle in for a really long night, I realized that one person had the power to send all those people home and break up this party. It was me. All I had to do was return to the present and welcome a new day and forget the past. Well, that's a good poem, isn't it? Now, if you've actually uh, seen the movie Lion King, which I really can't imagine you not seeing it. Star Wars, I can kind of understand last week. Maybe you didn't see Star Wars. But Lion King, 1994, blockbuster, Lion King, right? And if you haven't seen it, I don't know what's wrong with you. But anyway, for, but The Lion King is an incredible movie, right? In The Lion King, Simba is consumed with the past. Simba is living in the city of regret, right? Something happened in the past that he cannot seem to get over. And because of his past, he doesn't think he has a future. How many people today watch it online in this building because of something that happened maybe a long time ago, but yet it literally affects your future? Something in the past is hindering your future. There's a guy in the Bible that really understood that really, really well, too. Uh, his name is Peter, and he felt like a failure. He felt like what he did in the past disqualified him for the future. And so I want to talk to you uh, about how to get past your past, all right? We're going to be in Luke chapter 22, verses 33 and 34. Uh, and I'm going to come back and read these scriptures again and, and give you some more. But he said to him, Lord, this is Peter, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. And then he said, Jesus, 
I'm going to tell you something, Peter. The rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. Now, if you're here for the first time, watch it online for the first time, I always give a... Uh, Come on now, y'all got to get better on that. Okay, a big idea. Here, here's what it is. Listen carefully. Don't allow the mistakes of the past to shout so loud that you don't hear the future, right? If, you, if you're not careful, the mistakes of the past will be so loud in your life that you won't be able to hear the future. All right, now watch this. Let's go back to this and let's kind of uh, dive a little bit deeper, all right? So Jesus is having a conversation with Peter in Luke chapter 22, right? And he tells Peter very clearly, he says, listen carefully, Satan, the devil, has desired to have you, and he wants to sift you as we. So don't miss this. Jesus just said, Satan desires to have you. He wants to sift you like we. The devil is after you, right? But listen to this. But he said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Now, that may be confidence, but it may be borderline little cockiness, right? He might have uh, overestimated self a little bit and underestimated the devil a whole lot, right? Now, watch what it says. Then he said, Jesus, I'm going to tell you something, Peter. The rooster, right, shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. Peter, listen, I know what you just said. I know you were big and bad and bold. Hey, I'm willing to go to prison. Hey, matter of fact, when you read the context, here's what he says. All these other guys around you, they're going to hit the road. That's what he says. Hey, all of them right here, they may leave you, but I'm telling you what, I'm willing to go to prison. I'm willing even to die for you. And Jesus said, nah. now watch the story unfold. But Peter said, man, now listen, this is the third time that he actually denies Jesus, right? The first time, he's warming his hands by the fire. This is all in the Bible. The Bible's a really cool book. You ought to read it, all right? He's warming his hands by the fire. And while he's warming his hands by the fire, a lady starts talking to him. And she says, hey, are you from Galilee, right? Your speech betrays you, right? It's like being in a room full of Yankees and got one Southerner, right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Your speech betrays you, right? Or, or verse, vice versa, right? And so he's warming his hands by the fire. He must got that Southern Galilean accent, right? And so, and he goes, no, I, I don't know him. And then it happens again. The second time, he actually curses. Peter curses, right? He, he, he's so mad. No. And he curses. He says, I don't know him. This is the third time. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you're saying. Immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. That word look means to gaze intently, right? I mean, he's leaning in and eye locking Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Watch this verse right here. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. He spent three years with Jesus. He saw Jesus do all kinds of amazing miracles, right? And in the hour of Jesus' great need, right, the person who loves you the most you let him down. Dang, anybody know, feel that? He went out and he wept bitterly. He cried, overwhelmed. He's embarrassed. He's ashamed. He's sad. He's depressed. He's so frustrated and he feels like a failure. Matter of fact, when you read the rest of it in the Gospel of John, he says, hey, everybody, I'm going back to fishing. I'm done with all this Jesus apostleship. I'm going back to fishing. He's so messed up in his head because of how he failed. Have you ever noticed that a particular sight, something that you see, can actually bring back a memory that you hadn't had in so very long? Have you ever, like, heard something and all of a sudden it brings you back? 
All right, now, I'm going to date myself a little bit, and for you younger people, you know, just hang on with me just a minute. But every time I hear, babe, I'm leaving by sticks, come on, anybody help me? Anybody? Nobody? If I, okay, if I could sing it, I'd sing it right now. But y'all would all run out that building this, that way, okay? Babe, I'm leaving. It puts me back. I lived in uh, Hahn Air Force Base in Germany, right, for three years, right? And I can remember those school dances. I can remember walking up to those girls saying, hey, you want to dance? And them saying, no. <laughs> but I've never, I've always been a little persistent. So I would ask again until like the 19th time somebody say, yes, amen, all right. And I'd, I'd slow dance to, babe, I'm leaving, all right? I can, I can hear it in my mind. It brings me back. Have you ever heard a, a sound and it takes you back. Or smell. Grandma's cooking, right? And grandma's been gone a long time, but you can. Can you imagine in the culture in which Peter lived, roosters were everywhere, right? I've been to Africa on four different occasions. Lord willing, I'm going next year as well. And if anybody wants to go, Uganda, Kenya. Uh, but anyway. Uh, I've been, and everywhere I've stayed, and Shane went with me, and uh, the last time I went, Shane went with me, and he knows we got woke up every morning, right, to that rooster crowing. I mean, it ha you know, the culture, right? And so every day of his life, a rooster crowed. Can you imagine waking up every day hearing the sound that reminds you of your greatest failure? Can you imagine every single day being reminded that you messed up, that you failed, that you blew it every day of his life? And you know what happens when people fail really bad? They erect a monument and then they pay homage to it, right? Here's a word that God gave me many, many years ago. Don't turn a moment into a monument. Yeah, you messed up. And it, maybe it was really, really bad. Maybe it was gigantic. Maybe you hurt a lot of people. Maybe your decision affected, which most decisions do, affected a lot of other people and it hurt people and you messed up really, really bad. But don't turn a moment into a monument because if you do, you're going to live in the past your whole entire life and miss out about what God has for you in the future. Don't allow your failure to paralyze your future. Hmm. Don't allow the mistakes of the past to shout so loud that you don't hear the future. So how do I get past my past, all right? That's what you're asking, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, all right? All right, here we go. Number one, don't believe the lies of the enemy. If I could tell you the number one thing that people are in my office, that what happens to them after I talk to them, is you have been believing a lie of the enemy for years. Some of you have believed a lie that Satan whispered in your ear or you whispered in your own ear. You believed that lie for so long that you are now living that lie. Don't believe the lies of your enemy because there's a scar out there. Watch. You listen to the lies of the enemy. It's your fault. You're a mess. This happened because of you. So guess what? Just run away. Don't deal with it. <laughs> Just run away. And so when you believe the lies of the enemy, you will continuously live in the past. So don't. Let me tell you another one. How do I get past my past? Listen carefully. Our failures don't disqualify us. They prepare us. See, if you're not careful, you'll fail, which we all fail. We all mess up. They don't, they, don't, they, they don't disqualify you. God doesn't put you on the shelf because you messed up and because you failed, right? That failure prepares you. Uh, I love um, Jack Welch. Many years ago, he was a CEO of General Electric, if you know that story, right? And he had a guy on his staff that made a million-dollar mistake. And so Jack Welch got interviewed and said, hey, you're going to fire this guy? He made a million-dollar mistake. And Jack 
well, it said no. He just learned a million-dollar lesson, right? And so our failures don't disqualify us. They prepare us. You know what Peter thought? Peter thought he was done. I, I'm finished, right? I, I, I blew it. I should have done this, but I, but, I, but I didn't. His failures instead shaped him for success. How do I get past my past? Listen carefully. Failure isn't final. I don't know who needs to hear that today, but failure isn't final. You blew it. You messed up, but failure isn't final. Uh, I love sports. My, my family, we're a sports family. If you've been here like more than like three Sundays in a row, you probably know that to be true, right? We love sports. My, all my kids played sports. Uh, we played multiple sports. We, we, it was Jesus, church, and sports for so many years. Anybody know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, my gosh, right? We, we, we love it. And uh, man, yesterday, uh, I won't say for some of you are in deep depression, I'm just going to say the tide didn't roll yesterday. That's all I'm going to say. I can already feel nasty emails coming my way, all right? I will delete all of them in Jesus' name, all right? So, uh, so anyway, it's a good day, right? I mean, our Braves, come on, bravos, right? One, man. I was at a game, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. I just love the Braves, right? I, I love sports. I love winning. I, I, don't, I don't have the personality to mention that yesterday we had, like, my whole family and, and Dustin was over the house and we all played basketball. I'm not going to mention that I won last night. I would never <laughs> do that publicly, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but I, I won. It came down to me and Kirby. But anyway, <clears throat> moving right along. So, so listen carefully. Opening day, 1954, the Milwaukee Braves, back then Milwaukee Braves, and the Cincinnati Reds played each other. And the rookie for each team made his major league dubé, dubé, dubé whatever that word is. Yes, thank you. The rookie who played for the Reds hit four doubles and helped his team win, beat the Braves 9-8. to eight. The other rookie that played for the Braves went 0-5. Oh 0-5. And five. Oh and five. The Reds player was named Jim Greengrass. Anybody ever, ever heard of Jim? Jim Greengrass, no? The other guy who didn't get a hit went 0 for 5. You may have heard his name before. It's Hank Aaron. Okay? Failure isn't final. Watch this. Do you see how Simba can't get past the pass? He's believed the lies of the enemies. He's believed that he's disqualified, right? And literally, he believes that failure is final. He, he cannot get his head right because of that. And so, you got to get past your past. Let me give you number four. Know that God sees what you can become, not what you are now. Was this off because at 9 o'clock they stood up, shouted, spit, and ran around the building, okay? <laughs> know that God sees what you can become, not what you are now. God doesn't see, yeah, okay. A little late to the party, but still, I'll take it, all right? You understand that, right? That God doesn't see, listen, God took a guy named Peter whose name was Simon and changed his name to Peter, right? Uh, which means rock. We may wonder what Jesus actually sees in us. <laughs> he sees what can be. God sees what can be. God doesn't focus on your past. God doesn't focus on all your mess. God focuses on what can be. You guys know that I, I love history, right? Uh, Emperor Ferdinand told Mozart that his music was noisy and it had too many notes. 
I think he was wrong. What do you think? Van Gogh only sold one painting while he was alive. Hmm. You see, the devil has told many of you, you're through, and you have believed it. I crossed a line. I messed up. I caused so much pain. I caused so much hurt. The damage is so bad. Yes, it, all that could be true. But the devil has lied to you and said, you're through. You're done. You can't be used anymore. You, you got too much debt. You know, you've been divorced twice. God can't use you. You're a disgrace. You're finished. That is the lie of the enemy. And you cannot believe that. You know what happened to Peter, right? I'm going back to fishing, right? I, I got to preach this soon. Breakfast at the beach, right? John chapter 21. Jesus is cooking breakfast at the beach, right? And anytime you got breakfast and beach, it's a good day right there, all right? And so uh, John 21, for those of you that need to look that up, breakfast at the beach. And he has this conversation with Peter, right? And he restores Peter at that time. And Peter goes on to preach, and 3,000 people get saved. Peter goes on to tell Gentiles, which is probably 99.99% .99 of us in this room right here, of the gospel message. Listen carefully. Your, this is number five, your father says, know who you are. Some of you have forgotten who you are. Some of you have forgotten that you're saved, that you're a child of, of the king, that you have been justified, you have been redeemed, that Jesus lives in you, and he on the cross died for your past and your present and even your future mistakes, right? He died for all of it, and you need to listen to your father tell you, know who you are. Well, three of you got that. Can you imagine your heavenly father? Why, why, listen, people believe a lie, right? And when you believe that lie, then you got to ask yourself a question. Is that what God would say to you? Would, is that something God would say over you, right? Would God say, you're done, you're through, you messed up so bad in the past that I can never use you? Is that something God would say to you? Or would God say, listen, yeah, the past is the past. You repented. You've asked forgiveness. You, let's move on, right? you got to listen to the voice of your heavenly father because he's speaking to you. And he's saying, listen, your past is in the past. Let me do something in you now to impact the future. Every uh, Sunday I give takeaways. Let me give you some takeaways. Listen carefully. It doesn't matter who you were. God cares about who you're becoming. You're so caught up in who you were and what you did, and God is caught up that you started coming back to church. How awesome is that? You started reading your Bible. You started praying. You started making some right, good decisions, right? So guess what? It doesn't matter who you were. God cares about who you're becoming. Takeaway number two. Your father isn't frowning over your past. He's smiling at your bright future. God's not... He's smiling about what you can become because he knows what's in there. And then the big idea, the third takeaway, don't allow the mistakes of the past to shout so loud. Have they shouted so loud that they've crippled you, they've paralyzed you, that you don't hear the future? You don't hear that God's got some big, amazing, awesome plan for your life in the future because you're so consumed with the past. Uh, I've been all over the world, right, 30 countries, and, uh, and I make jokes that I speak seven languages. Actually, I speak like a phrase in like seven different languages, right? And uh, I've been to Africa. You heard me say earlier, right? I've been to Africa four times. And there are 
thousands and thousands and thousands of different languages in Africa. Thousands and thousands and thousands, just like in China, thousands of different languages spoken. The only language that is kind of universal, not English, it's Swahili, all right? And the movie Lion King has a lot of Swahili in it, right? The monkey, right? His name is Rafiki, right? That means friend. Uh, Rafiki Yangu, that means my good friend. When I go to Africa, that's the first thing they say to me. Rafiki Yangu, and we hug and we embrace. My good friend, right? Did you notice that the good friend is the one that came alongside and spoke truth into his life? Did you notice it was the good friend that took him to the Father? Can you imagine, right, that thank God for friends that literally will guide you in the right direction and on the right course, right? It's because I, I said this, this this past Wednesday night, you've been listening to the wrong voices for so long and hanging out with the wrong people, hearing the wrong voices that you're making the wrong decisions. That was, that was Wednesday night, back to the future, right? And so thank God for a friend that will come alongside and just say, not point a finger and scream at you. Nobody needs that, right? But to come alongside you and say, man, I love you. Man, you've gotten off that beaten path. Come on back, right? Rafiki Yangu. So you're here today and you've, you're consumed with your past. You can't seem to move past your past. Everything is just a reminder to you and you just literally are crippled and paralyzed because of what happened a month ago or 10 years ago. Well, today you can get past your past. Today you can make a decision and say, you know what? I'm no longer believing those lies. I'm believing what the Father has spoken over me. And today, you may need to come make that decision public. You may need to come and have some folks pray with you over that past decision and now you're moving forward. You may need to... uh, go to a, we call it like an old-fashioned altar, contemporary church, but we still come down and kneel, right? And so you can come kneel. Whatever God speaks to you about doing, I want to encourage you to do it. Get past your past. Many of you watching online, many of you in this room right now, you've never been saved. You're not a Christian. You hope you're one. You guess you are. You think you are. Yeah, I went to church many, many years ago. Yeah, I got baptized. Yeah, I'm good. I'm moral. I'm decent. All those things are awesome. But do you know without a shadow of a doubt that your past has completely been eradicated by Jesus? Do you know 100% sure that if you died right now that you'd go to heaven because Christ lives in you? Not because you're good. Not because you're moral. Not because you got baptized. Not because you got dedicated as a baby. (laughs) but because you asked Christ to come into your life and he saved you. For God so loved the world, you know that verse, don't you? That he gave, and you know what he gave? He gave Jesus to you and to me. They laughed at him, they spit at him, they mocked him, they stripped him down naked. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14, you could barely recognize he was a human being, how bad they beat him. He suffered, he bled, he died, he rose from the dead, and now, He wants to come into your life and save you and forgive you. I hope you'll make that decision today. Let's pray together. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Man, in this quiet moment, a moment that maybe you thought about something in the past, hurtful, painful, but today, You're tired of believing the lies of the enemy and today you're willing to embrace what your father says over you. Today you're realizing, man, failure isn't final. I didn't disqualify myself. God was preparing me. And today you need to reconnect your heart back to God. I want to encourage you to come. I encourage you to come and pray. Whatever God speaks to you about doing, I want to encourage you to do it. Others of you watching online in this building, you don't know right now that if you died, you'd go to heaven. I'm doing a funeral today at 4 o'clock in this building 
for a 27-year-old young man. Eternity is too long to be wrong. Do you know without a shadow of a doubt, as well as you know you're sitting in this building or watching online, that if I died right now, I'd be in heaven? If not, then I want to help you settle that decision right now. I'm going to pray a prayer out loud. No special, unique, magic prayer by any means. But a prayer that you can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. So if you want your sins forgiven, completely gone, wiped away, you want Jesus living inside of you and heaven as your home, and today you're willing to commit your life to God. That's the big deal right there. You got to be willing to commit. Here's my heart. Here's my life. If that's you, then just pray this prayer right now. Just say, Lord Jesus. Just say it to him. Oh, God, I don't know 100% sure that if I died right now, I'd be in heaven. I know that I've sinned against you, and I'm really sorry. And I am willing today to turn away from my sin. I believe you died for me, Jesus. I believe you rose from the dead. And right now, I give up. I surrender. Take my heart. Take my life. Save me. Forgive me. Change me. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Heads bowed. We are so excited that today you decided to join us online. We hope today that you were encouraged and blessed by the Word of God and encouraged today to walk with God in a deeper, more intimate way. For some of you, you just prayed that prayer with us. You just invited Jesus Christ to come into your heart. And if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, do you realize that Jesus just saved you? Your sins just got forgiven. And that is the greatest thing in all the world. Matter of fact, the Bible says that all of heaven throws a party because you just said yes to Jesus Christ. And so we want to encourage you to read the Bible, to pray, to find you a, a church home that you may be involved in, or even on this online campus we've got going on here. Or I want to encourage you, if you just prayed that prayer, to let us know about that. Matter of fact, you can text your response to 470-509-5139. I want to encourage you to do that right now. Don't wait. You don't have to think about it. If you just pray that prayer, text that response to us and let us know, and then we will get back with you and help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Again, thanks for watching us online.